Welcome everybody, I'm Derek Arden and I'm delighted to introduce you to my friend and colleague Patricia Fritt. Just let me tell you a little bit about uh, Patricia. Um, and the, today we're talking about how to be a rock star in business speaking and sales. And Patricia is certainly a rock star in the speaking business. However, her brother, Robert Fritt, is a real rock star, of course, because uh, those of you who know King Crimson, he founded King Crimson, started King Crimson, and they were playing at the Albert Hall not so long ago in the, uh, in the UK. So uh, he was going to join us today, but he's probably practicing. Uh, somebody he just, just came in. I let him in. Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> okay. So I met Patricia Fripp in Indianapolis when I was attending the uh, Global Speaking Convention, the National Speaking Association's Convention of America, but I call it the uh, Global Speaking Convention. And I had a goal when I saw Patricia walking along the corridor to speak to her, to introduce myself and try and persuade her and negotiate with her to uh, come and headline the Professional Speaking uh, Association's conference in the UK at uh, the Hard Rock Hotel, which was the Cumberland Hotel in Marble Arch. Well, the negotiation didn't go very well at first because Patricia said, I only come to the UK to see my brother and I'm on holiday, etc., etc." But I'm not one to give up. And those that you know me, everything's negotiable. And if you don't succeed the first time, you keep going. Well, I kept going and Patricia said, well, I'm beginning to come round to you, but here's the deal. Every time I come to the UK, you pick me up at Heathrow and you drive me to Wimborne. And I said, every time. And she said, uh, yeah, every time. I said, well, let's give it a whirl first of all. So she then handed me a ticket to copy. And it, this was a plane from San Francisco that arrived at 6.15 on Bank Holiday Monday. And I said, OK, I'll be there. But there was a problem. I went to Terminal 1 and the flight landed at Terminal 2. And those of you that know Heathrow Airport, there's a long way between terminal one and terminal two anyway i drove um i drove patricia to see her friend uh, sue in wimborne which was great and i did that three times before before i finally persuaded her to headline the uh, speaking conference uh, uh, in in london but there is an issue with this of course because we don't pay people we don't pay for their hotel and we don't pay for their traveling expenses so this is a pretty tough call to actually do but I got there in the end and Patricia and I have become friends and uh, I generally pick Patricia up whenever she arrives at Heathrow. I did last November in the pouring rain the flight was two hours late uh, the uh, Patricia's bags were still in San Francisco and she was in the baggage hall I drove to Pershaw where uh, Robert lives and got home about uh, midnight and I'm thinking this is uh, getting a little bit uh, like uh, hard work I just want to tell you something about Patricia now after that introduction. In Patricia's 40-year career as a Hall of Fame speaker, uh, she's delivered 3,500 live presentations across all five continents. Knowing the world was going to change, Patricia was ahead of the game and transitioned very quickly into virtual meetings and teaching uh, via this medium. And that was two or three years ago. And you'll hear more about that uh, as we go along. I think Patricia, you've done over a hundred virtual presentations paid to live audiences. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, and we want to learn a lot more about that. This is going to be slightly different from my normal chat shows uh, because it's going to be a little bit more formal, but please put your questions in the chat box because that's what it's there for. And I will interrupt uh, Patricia during the case of that. And in case anyone here is thinking that this that I'm not a speaker. Please, we're all speakers, we all influence, we all negotiate, we all sell, because that's what makes the go world go round. And how you do it, the more professionally, the better you are, the, the more effective you will be, and actually the more fun you will have. So Patricia, welcome, and thank you so much for joining uh, the Derek Arden Chat Show. Absolutely, my pleasure as always. And you were very kind to talk about brother and sister as being rock stars in our worlds. And we know you are a rock star in yours of negotiations. I clicked too fast. My brother Robert says, the principles in one discipline are the same as in every other discipline. 
And this he first said after I had been cutting his hair. And I explained when I was a hairstylist training other hairstylists that how I taught them to frame their haircuts and add the magic and the extra special, what I say, the difference between a $25 and a $50 haircut. And that's when he said, the principles in one discipline are exactly the same as every, every other discipline. Because how you frame a speech and how you frame a haircut is very similar. And yes, my brother is the founding and ongoing member of the band King Crimson. And last year was King Crimson's 50th anniversary. And when he had a press conference, which he really does, for a day in London, and even the, the editor of Rolling Stone magazine came to England, and when asked, what is the purpose of this next 50th anniversary tour? He said, we will be introducing King Crimson to innocent ears. In other words, they have millions of fans worldwide. However, the purpose was to introduce to people in the 20s. And now they have a large following who probably their grandfathers are also followers. And this is the unique opportunity we have, Derek, when it comes to web training, web presentations. And of course, it's not only what we do, it's repurposing. Now, in this conversation, we will be focusing on virtual conversations and meetings because many of our, of course, listeners and followers are not professional speakers. However, there will be some techniques for speakers as well. So what is the same? Why is it different? When can we be ready? And very fast, and this is part of getting you ready, and how can you be a star? Very important, when you're in a Zoom meeting or any other format you might be using, smile. Your audience can feel it. And your camera is always on. What happens very often in these Zoom meetings, you can't see yourself. However, your audience can see you. If it's a large meeting, there are several screens. For our Golden Gate Breakfast Club meetings, I go to the different screens and look at everybody. And some people obviously do not know they are being seen by others. That's enough said, but be aware. What we have to do is project energetic intimacy. As you know, Derek, I work with a lot of engineers, brilliant people. However, when your audience and many of my clients' audiences are to thousands of people, however, they're just looking in the webcam. We have to project slightly larger than life. Look good and be well-dressed. And the joke is, of course, people look good from the waist down and then they, they have their underpants. When I'm projecting, I put slacks on, no, no pajama bottoms. Because when you are looking in the camera and seeing yourself, it makes you feel better, more professional, and easier to put out that energy. What is the same with every conversation, presentation, or web presentation, or even a recording? We always speak to be remembered and repeated. And this is why I encourage people to pause, even when the audience isn't there to nod or respond. And when we present our message well, in shorter sentences, specific language, we are also speaking to the audience of our audience when they repeat what they have heard. What I recommend all sales professionals and speakers when they're on stage and in this format do say, if, if this makes sense, next time you talk to your 
management, please tell them bullet, 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 bullet. You are saying that before your review. What you can look forward to, what is the same with all types of presentations. And as I was chatting with, with Derek yesterday in our rehearsal, this is really my agenda slide. And even if your slide says, this is our agenda, you don't have to say that. This is what you can look forward to. Put a positive expectation on what's going to follow. Presentation tips, delivery techniques, and technology comfort. And you will hear and see by some of the slides that are branded to my clients, this comes from my clients' training. The secret of connecting to every audience, whatever format, even if your, if your, your presentation is pre-recorded, is to realize that your subject has to be of interest to your audience. And many speakers say to me, oh, Patricia, my audience is sent into my training to get fixed. They don't think it's of interest to them. They might not coming in. However, you win them over by speaking as an audience advocate. In other words, you look at your presentation from your audience's point of view. In many of the sessions I delivered recently to Toastmaster conferences, NSA meetings, I put up polls. Do you consider yourself a beginner, intermediate, advanced speaker? And do you want to get paid to speak or is, are you in Toastmasters or NSA just to do better in your career? I let people know, I know you are there. And then I can say for the 63% of you who would like to get paid. One way, whether you know your audience or not, to have people feel you're talking about them is to work on the very simple premise. This works in speaking, sales, conversations, or at a dinner party, is to remember, everyone's more interested in themselves than they are in us. And if you can watch the balance between the I versus you ratio, you can win people over faster. We always want our audience to think the speaker is talking just to me. If you had a live audience of 500 people in front of you, you might still say, How often have you, or in your experience, they might have 499 people next to them. They feel the speaker is talking to them. And when the one person is behind the computer screen, it really doesn't make sense to say, how are you all? Now they know they are part of a larger audience and you might do that once if this is a company meeting, how in general you're talking to one. The techniques are virtual, pre-recorded and live when it comes to you focused language are the same. What has been your past experience with? hiring professional speakers. What has been your past experience working with plumbers? It doesn't matter the industry. Let's discuss what you need to know to make a good decision. When you enter into a negotiation, now this, you see, if Derek used this line in his training, even with 500 people sitting in front, they think Derek is only talking to me because they are reflecting on their own experience. How often have you had the experience? When you engage the Frit Arden team, you, and I highlight the you or yours, because you notice so far there have been no eyes and you are still communicating. You might say when you engage the Frit Arden team, you have an unbeatable combination. Would it make sense to you if we were to whiteboard your sales process, negotiation strategy, or network environment. Of course, in most of my clients, it is a network environment. 
for the American Payroll Association, which is my 24 year consecutive client who just had the most amazing virtual convention, a model to how to go virtual. They also engaged me to help them with virtual presentations that they are going to deliver live as a team and also pre-recorded presentations that people would just watch. And you can say, welcome to the name of the session. What you can look forward to learning. I am Patricia Fripp. You have the security of knowing for the past 18 years of my career, I've been in payroll. For the past eight years, I have taught Advanced Payroll 101. Or what, you see, you are building your, your experience so the audience has confidence. This is all about the audience's confidence that what they will learn from you is valid from a seasoned professional. My co-presenter is also a seasoned professional. He is a certified payroll professional and PhD, best known for his work in the university environments. You can do that if you are live, pre-recorded or live online. You can also incorporate other opening options that you m might deliver before you introduce yourself or after. These work certainly in an in-person meeting, in a web training, they work all the same. A question, a story, a statistic or little known fact. Define your role or transport your audience. You can do these before or after your introduction. Can you give us an example of that, that, that sort of introduction, Patricia? Uh, yes. Why don't we look at each one? If there are a question, and for the professional speakers in our audience, when I am live, I usually ask, do you begin a presentation using the line, have you ever? And most people say yes. And I recommend, Derek, and this would be the same in a sales conversation or presentation, you say, how often, how often have you dis been disappointed with the result of a negotiation? How often have you stood up to speak before an audience and forgotten what your opening line was? If you did it once and lived through it, they don't need your advice. However, if they have that frequently happen, they need your advice even more. You might also say, if I were to ask you, is 2020 the year you double the quality of your presentation skills? Or if I were to ask you, is 2020 the year you double your closure rate as a result of your negotiations? Perhaps you'd say yes. Perhaps you'd say no. Most likely you would say, Patricia or Derek, I would love it to be, can you tell me how? Well, good news. You're at the right place at the right time. In the next three hours, you will learn 22 specific techniques to increase the chance your negotiations are successful. Then there's a story. And what is a good technique in a presentation, or it could even be a sales conversation? You begin with a story about a happy customer who began as a prospect with the same problem or challenge as the company you're now talking to. And it could be on a regular basis, we hear our potential clients like you say help and then if they were to clearly articulate the problem so you can paint the picture of someone in dire situations 
and then say, uh, Derek, as you're in this situation, this is what we would recommend. And then at the end, you tell the happy ever after when you're asking for their business or th then you might say, you remember I introduced you to Tim who had the same challenge as you. If Tim were here, he would tell you, I would not have believed it possible that. So you can use a story, the beginning, it has to fight, have a satisfying conclusion before you go on, but then you bring up the end of the story. That would be one example. Then when it comes to, um, when it comes to communicating what you do, for example, uh, define your role is, is another one. My friend, Mike Powell, my next door neighbor, was a senior scientist at Genentech. And I invite him to speak to my Continental Breakfast Club, a group of business women, when he was working on an AIDS vaccine. And I said, Mike, you understand, none of us spend time with scientists. And even if we did, we probably wouldn't know they were talking about. Can you tell us, what is it like to be a scientist? And he said, this was the beginning of his presentation. Being a scientist is like doing a jigsaw puzzle in a snowstorm at night when you don't have all the pieces and you don't have the picture you're trying to create. I defy you to explain what you do and that would be a great exercise for everyone. Being a negotiator, being a professional speaker, being a project manager, being a whatever. And see if you can use words that are colorful and create pictures. That's when you're more likely to be remembered and repeated. I have given that example for decades. I never wrote it down. It was that visual. I also mentioned an interesting statistic or little known fact. When you are going to use, and it's not only at the beginning, although that's a great technique, it can be within any conversation or presentation, add an emotion. Would it interest you to know that? Would it surprise you to know that? Would it shock you to know that? When you have a great speaker who's a content expert and an audience who genuinely wants to know what they are about to learn and a company who is investing in the information to increase sales or productivity, that when everything works perfectly, three weeks later, they will have forgotten 70% of what they heard. Hopefully the 30% makes a difference. And that is why you need repetition and reinforcement. And that's why they're going to buy your book uh, and listen to your CDs, Derek. So was that good enough examples for you? Yeah, they were great. Now, they were great examples. Um, there's a couple of questions I've got if you need a little rest. Okay, sure, sure. Um, Number one is what is the IU ratio? Because I find it's very difficult not to talk and say I, me, me, me. Okay, you've coached me to get out of it, but I'm not sure I'm out. Well, of it. it's it's you want to, for example, you're writing an email. Uh, I am sending you this. You you write down the information, then you go back and think, uh, dear Derek, uh, you will be receiving a link to rather than I'm sending you a link. Just use it in your everyday life. It's just, if you, ha if you had a conversation on the phone with the prospect, you had it transcribed, and then you look at it and see, you look at it and see, is there any way I could rewrite that? <coughs> I could rewrite that, that would make it more you focused. For example, I have my live presentations transcribed or I create a video have transcribed and when I work with celebrity speakers or speakers who they have their speech this is their speech then what I would do is hang on stop sharing uh, 
when they have their speech, I would have it transcribed and then with a yellow highlight, go through all the eyes just to see if you could restructure it. The I isn't the first sentence. Okay. And, and you're not going to speak and not say I. If you think of it this way, and Alan Weiss uses this, if you, if you have friends over to dinner, which would you prefer? Would you like to see my holiday slides or will you show me your holiday slides? The secret, Derek, of being interesting is to be interested. Absolutely, absolutely. And my friend Will Kintish starts off his uh, fantastic uh, networking seminars with that. Two quick things before we move on. And I know that and if they weren't things, what would they be, Derek? Oh, OK. Yeah. Really powerful information. <laughs> I didn't realize I was coming on here to be your guinea pig, but uh, let's go for it. Um, two fantastic lines. I hesitated then that you used. I loved energetic itinerary. No, energetic intimacy. Intimacy. I wrote that down wrong. Intimacy. Okay, energetic intimacy. And the audience of the audience, which we don't always think of. Oh, definitely. How often have you got a call because somebody said, hey, my friend or my colleague was in your seminar and you said this, and that really resonates with us. Can we talk about hiring you to speak for us? That's the word of mouth. And this is how you get your content shared on YouTube or shared in LinkedIn or Facebook. Now, I know so, we need to move on and I know why we need to move on because you've got a highly paid, um, a highly <laughs> paid opportunity at, uh, at 10 o'clock San Francisco time, I think. Yes, that's right. So we let's keep going. Uh, what's very important when you are co-presenting, and this is what well, I've been working with my tech clients and the American Payroll Association, is how do you transition? If you are both on stage together, it's a lot easier to look across to your colleague and see that they finished. Some of my clients are going live. They have two or three presenters delivering the information. With others, they are pre-recording it and their colleague is not in the same room. They are recording their part in, in their own home. And then the production company is putting it together. And they were saying, Fripp, they, they don't know how to close. They don't know how to part over. Or if they're live together, they don't know when to begin speaking. You need to have good transition lines that everybody knows. Now that you understand the why, to discuss the how, here is Deborah. If you are pre-recording this, which several of my tech clients are doing, what you do is you then pause and smile on silence for five seconds looking into your webcam. That means the production company has time to seamlessly put them together. Because if you say, uh, to discuss the how, then look down and, and, and turn, <laughs> stop sharing or turn off. It's too difficult for the production company to put it together. Or it could be as simple as, over to you, Mary. And if you're in a live presentation, that's good. Back to you, Dennis. This is the cue so you're not talking on top of each other. Or, And even if and this is what a lot of companies are doing. They are pre-recording the content. However, they're coming in when it's live for the chat. Remember, you can pose a question in the chat box and they come in. And this is what I recommend for live presentations. And it works for virtual that are pre-recorded or when you come in live to handle the chat. You always need to be prepared to handle whatever happens. Even in a live presentation, Derek, you open for questions. You don't know if anyone's going to ask any. You need to have questions, what I call in your back pocket, which means they are prepared. You don't 
quite know if you're going to need them. If no one's putting their hand up or in a conference coming to the present, coming up to the microphone in the center of the room, or in a virtual meeting, you've asked people to write in the chat and nobody has, then you say, Mary, at this point, we usually ask, what do you do in this situation? You're giving value even though the audience isn't asking questions. Fantastic. Brilliant. And this is, this is what, why I keep teasing Derek. And this is challenging. To build our credibility, we need to be specific. I tell all my clients, if it's not fruit, it's not a bunch. You don't get a bunch of ideas. If you can't weigh it, it's not tons. Again, you don't get tons of ideas. You don't take tons of notes. You don't go to a trade show and get a ton of leads. No, you don't. If you went to a trade show and had a ton of leads, you would be looking for a forklift to get them home. If it were not a thing, what would it be? And who are the people? As you heard, my life good portion of my life is with engineers. And these people are so brilliant, Derek. They have more brains in their little finger than I have in my whole body. And my father would be so surprised I get paid to tell them what to say. One brilliant engineer said, there are two things people love about. And I said, if they weren't things, what would they be? He said, innovative upgrade. I said, there are billions of people in the world. What people love your innovative upgrades. He said, systems administrators, can you see the quality of the difference between there are two things people love about and there are two innovative upgrades that systems administrators love? That specificity is important when you are speaking to someone who speaks English as a first language. However, for this client, they attract customers from 71 different countries. And you do not have to leave your own shores to be speaking to an international audience. Then experts do not kind of sort off or stuff, uh, unless it's Thanksgiving or Christmas and you are stuffing the turkey. I have found, and I don't know what it is, because I coach engineers and executives from many different companies, I find that there are patterns that happen with all of them. And I am terrified I'm going to catch what I'm trying to get them to stop doing. And I find many of them kind of a sort of. And I asked one brilliant banker, how well educated are you? knowing the answer, PhD, MBA, all these professional degrees. I said, why are you such a sloppy speaker? And he said, and he had never thought about this till I challenged him on it, which is, Derek, you do not improve what you're not aware of. And people around you, people who love you, and people who rely on you for a paycheck don't tell you the truth, which is why outside consultants like us and Tim and Gary and the other Gary and Jim and the friends who I know are professional advisors, this is why they hire us, because we respectfully tell them the truth. And the advantage about maturity, and I, I use this as my advantage, because I'm quite aware some people might think I'm too old, is I am seasoned enough that although I will be respectful for your executive, nobody's going to push me around. Because I'm successful enough, I don't need this job if, if we don't have good rapport. All right, the point is, let's go back to the banker. I digress. The banker's realization was, Patricia, all the guys who report to me, we were all in training at the same time. And I said, you are trying to prove you're still one of the guys and you are not. You need to speak. 
not highfalutin language, but to the language of your education and position, because you have the responsibility to model. This is how you speak if you want to be promoted in our company. Another example, I was coaching the the support team in, I get brought in to speak to the salespeople and the systems engineers who demonstrate the technology. And I was talking them about their sloppy language. And one of the, uh, the support, the engineers put up his hand and said, Patricia, but our customers speak this way. And out of my mouth, came a brand new fripicism that was so brilliant it is now part of my repertoire. I said, there are better ways to make an emotional connection to your customers and prospects than to model their sloppy language and bad behavior. Any quick questions, Derek, before we go on? Well, there's a couple of things in the chat box, uh, Patricia, but I'm concerned about your time. And as you're donating... Give them to me. To Give them to me. My friends. Um, okay, Kevin wants to know, what is the PowerPoint to image ratio that you're using? So in other words, your slides versus you. Uh, so many virtual presenters seem to have PowerPoint as the main feature, sometimes exclusively. I find myself more interested when I'm seeing you looking into the camera. Uh, yes, I, I agree. And let me see, see if I know, see, I'm still pinned. Um, in a, and that's a wonderful, a wonderful question, Kevin. In a webinar, rather than a Zoom meeting, and I build, as with this, I build question marks within my presentation. That's when I usually share my camera, unless something comes off. With a web meeting like this, when as soon as I share, I see everybody, rather than in a webinar, if you're spinned or, pinned or spotlighted, when you turn on your webcam. I'm not quite sure how people see me, if I'm little or if I'm big. In a webinar, they would see me take over the screen. Uh, but, but definitely, you want to look into the camera. Certainly, now if you're, in a, if you're having a, a web chat, a Zoom chat with some of your friends, you can look down and look at them. However, when you're presenting, you need to look in the webcam. And with that, I will go back and, because we do, is there any more quick comments, uh, Derek? Because I know we have sales and comfort with the technology. Well, we come. really want to go with that. I've got a question from Will Kintish, but I know the answer. So I'm gonna answer it and you can correct me. Um, Will loves your virtual background and it doesn't work like a green screen. Will, the reason for that is it's not a green screen. It's a real picture that Patricia's got there and she's always got it when... Yes, my, my assistant, Harold, took that picture and uh, you, we sent it to Kinko's and it prints on a board because my Cavett statue uh, would not be there if it was an image. And if you disappear into the background, when you move or your spouse comes into the Golden Gate Breakfast Club and then she disappears in the background, it's because you don't have a green screen behind it. Fantastic. Um, I just want to clarify one thing before you move on. And that is, I've always said to you, and this is for the benefit of the Brits in the audience, some of what you're saying or some of what I learned in America doesn't translate uh, when you get off the plane at Heathrow. So it does have to be put into English language, bearing in mind the audience, etc. And um, we talked about that in depth last night. Yes. And the principle is, I am British and I am more conservative than some of my American friends. However, I always have had more than American personality. I'm more slightly more outgoing. As my brother says, my sister is not backward about being forward. <laughs> uh, brothers tell the truth. Let's switch to sales, which is a big part of my business. 
And this is where my challenge and frustration comes in. And I'm sure the trainers among us will agree. Companies spend a fortune on their team's technical skills and their product knowledge. They might even uh, understand their, their contact management system, their territory management. They don't spend enough time with what do you say when you are in front of your prospect. It, they tell everything how to get there, not what to say. And, and so I come in and help people with what you say. And we always need repetition and reinforcement, which is why I have some other resources free for you that will show you. And that leads to sales success. And when it comes to making sure you, your, what you are saying is of interest to your audience, the key to connection is conversation. The secret of conversation is to ask questions and the quality of the information you receive depends on the quality of your questions. And this is where the you focus language comes in. You can feel confident. Thank you for working with the dedicated uh, you can feel confident that you are working with a dedicated and seasoned team. And this comes from one of my real life clients with well over a hundred years of combined experience as a master systems integrator. What do you know about distech controls? It might interest you to know that this year distech controls has already won five awards, including impact solution of the year and money saving product. Do you agree a seasoned team with an award winning control system is much likely, is much less likely to cause you problems? You want people, Derek, and you're a negotiation rock star. You need them to say yes, yes, yes. Do you believe that combination would be a good long term investment for your company? That's where I picked you up. That's where I picked you up last yeah. night. I said I'd feel uncomfortable with doing that sort of process selling uh, part. And what I would say, Derek, it's just when I rescript my clients' words, they say that isn't my words. I say you say them ten times, and they'll come out your mouth. You'll never think Fritz suggested them. Okay. So and then, but we want to know what's most important to you. Ener time saving energy, a lifetime cost of the system, quality would install, or having a future ready system that allows you to retain and attract the best tenants. All I would say, Derek, for your English friends, take the ha handout and adapt it to work for you. And this is important. It works in America. And I remember I have trained in Reading for a technology company. I trained in Taiwan, Australia, New Zealand and Scotland. So some audiences have embraced this. Your prospects will never disagree with themselves. So that when you say, uh, Derek, you said your three concerns are this, 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 and this. Is this correct? Uh, is there any, any other topic you would like to add to the discussion? You are bringing their words. How often has your wife said to you, you're not listening to me? Well, customers and prospects feel the same way. Now, opening a sales conversation, again, it's all about them. And this is a real life example from my client. I recommend all salespeople begin their presentations when they're at the point that they're giving a formal presentation. And even I use this even before I talk to them. If I get an inquiry, I always check out their LinkedIn profile, and say congratulations on a very impressive bio. Thank you for your interest in having a conversation with me about. You see, you talk about what they have a right to be proud of. You want to build before. You never thank people for their time. You thank them for the opportunity to discuss how the Fripps system integrator would be a valuable partner to your buildings. This is when you would introduce yourself. Now, if you are in a meeting, perhaps someone's introduced you. Even if you are just a name on the agenda and you're brought in, it's your time, 
I would say something of value before you introduce yourself. And again, you're building your credentials. You have the confidence. All this, Derek, is to give your prospect or customer's confidence. You have the confidence of knowing that based on our 100 combined years of experience, you are taking your team with you. You are taking your rich history with you. You are not alone in front of the prospect. Working with buildings of your size and complexity, everyone thinks their problem is different. You want to give them the confidence that we have been through every situation you have. There's no challenge you may have we've not experienced and solved. And then you have all your case histories, your stories to reinforce. And by the way, if this young man in the slide and pro slap, slipped him in last night, if he was on a building site, he would be fine. If he was in an office, a boardroom, talking to executives, don't you dare put your hands in your pocket because it makes you look nonchalant. And I would always be more respectful when you're talking to executives. So you see, this is where, now this slide here, this is actual conversations that I wrote for my clients, taking, I take what my clients are now doing and tighten it up. Can you see, a facility needs to, I don't care what your colon is for your business, allows, share, benefit, adapt. The power of verbs. Verbs inspire action and commitment. And then you want to, and, and again, not every word is of equal importance. So I take a small segment of my client scripts and I reinforce the principle by bolding the U's and underlining, underlining words that are verbs or build emotion. Because as the great Robert Fripp says, quality spreads. So working on the principle that what I can do with one page of your script now you take the principles which you're learning to reinforce it do with the rest of your script. And this would be a good idea for you to transcribe and look before you talk to the prospect. There are no eyes in here, Derek. This whole sales presentation script, which is live and real for one of my clients, has no eyes in. Yes, you spend quite a lot of time working on their script as well. Uh, on their PowerPoint before you uh, actually coach them on to, uh, to, to present it in the Fripp way. Oh, yeah. Well, the PowerPoint really comes last. Now, I will take one question before we go on, if there is one. Um, well, there's a rather long one, which I think we could deal with um, slightly off. off, off oh, okay, good. All right. And certainly, all right, so... Uh, and I'm going to give you an email address if, but I take short specific questions. Don't give me three paragraphs. What is your question and the context for asking it? I want uh, to ask you about that. Actually, uh, I find it uh, quite difficult, even on here to deal with someone who uh, can't ask a specific question. No, so no. It, it's a problem for the audience. And short specific, because one of my speech coaches uh, was listening to me and, and, he, and he said, the reason you couldn't answer that question well is because you couldn't get to the essence of what they were asking. And now I, I, now I have the confidence to say, could you ask me that in one sentence? And brother is brilliant. He says, when he takes questions, he said, that was two questions or three questions, pick one of them. Mm -hmm. If you are going to be delivering a virtual performance or you're taking your sales demos, because a lot of my clients have always done sales demos in Zoom or whatever platform they use. Now it's more and more. I say, if you're not comfortable talking to a camera, in other words, what you perceive as nobody, is bring a colleague or a family member in the room so you have someone to talk to. You can always, some of my clients who were going virtual, I say print out the images that you have of last year's audience that's big because they are still there. Just imagine them. Use shorter one idea sentences. 
and break it up with pauses in a way that the audience can digest what they heard. Many of my clients use uh, standing desks. I say, if, if you have the setup that allows it and that's what you feel comfortable, do it. And I've seen last week's uh, and several of our breakfast club uh, speakers are standing up. My setup is such it's difficult to do. However, if that gives you more energy, do it. And you can organize your notes anywhere you like. I have some notes behind me to the side. I've got a printout of my PowerPoint on the, on the monitor next. It's not that I need them. It's a, it's a, a way to give you confidence. Whatever you need a flip chart behind your web and behind your camera, do it. Technology is your friend. Uh, we have a, a blue microphone, which is a professional microphone that creates the sound. You need a good webcam. And if you are going to have meetings or deliver presentations or even enjoy being in a meeting, you need a stable internet connection. You need to have good lighting. For example, here, and I showed you, Derek, the difference, and I'm going to just to show our audience. I am turning off my lights that Harold set up. Can you see the difference? Certainly, it looks uh, a massive difference. Yeah, so Harold set up lights for me uh, above. He changed the colors of the lights above me. Uh, you need good lighting. Now I have, I'm in an office where I have windows here. That's just, you know, you. You can't redesign your house, you can reorganize it. But this is such that Harold blocked out the windows because otherwise when the sun's out, this side of my face is light and this is dark. So this way we block it out and have the light from the front. And even if you are facing a window, and it amazes me, you see people in Zoom meetings and you can't see them because the window's behind them. It, when I'm in hotel rooms working, which I often have to do, you just swivel around your laptop till you find the best light. But don't have, even as an attendee, don't have the window behind you if you can change it. Reboot your computer, especially if you're going to have a large audience. Close all other applications. Zoom takes a lot of bandwidth. Close other applications. And if you are doing this for work, you've got to negotiate with family members for quietness and look in your camera as much as possible. Minimize distractions in your environment. Everything we do adds to or distracts from our message. So I would even clear the line in front of you if there's anything distracting. I was, for the American Payroll Association, I was coaching their man and woman of the year and we recorded it, all of us, and I was looking at the man of the year and he was in his office. I said, look, you've got untidy pieces of paper pinned to your notice board. You've got something that sticks out. You've got a laptop that is, is still on and I can see the light behind you because your eyes will go to these distractions rather than the stay on the face and place your green screen correctly. If, you, if you're going to do a lot and you're using virtual backgrounds, you need a green screen. They are not expensive. You can use them as a, like a stand up banner. Get comfortable with delivery of all performances. How do you perfect a presentation? Rehearse, rehearse, rehearse. There is an adage and that is practice makes perfect. No, it doesn't. Practice makes permanent, good and bad. Michael Caine says rehearsal is the work, performance is the relaxation, and I am not going to argue with an Oscar winner. Laurence Olivier said the art is hiding the art. This is why I recommend you have some practice sessions before you do this for business. 
if you have any short specific questions and I suggest you put Derek Arden chat in the subject line. I know where it comes from, pfrip at frip.com. If you go to pfrip at frip.com forward slash handouts, you have the handout of this session and a lot of other resources I will show you. If you would like to hear from me weekly, which a short specific message on presentation skills, frip.com forward slash newsletter. I have a thousand blog posts on sales and presentation skills, frip.com blog. And as I mentioned, if you put in Patricia Fripp YouTube, how to use Zoom for business and look like an expert, you will have the public service announcement. When you go to frip.com handouts, you will see some videos on structures and stories and some handouts, opening options, the words, the techniques, Rockstar Communications ebook, uh, 11 biggest mistakes salespeople make and eight common pitfalls to avoid when you speak. And then what can I say, Derek? Exactly 10 o'clock my time with Fripp and Arden. Your negotiations and presentations are win-win. Now, Patricia, you've got to go, haven't you? Uh, yes, I do. I let you keep chatting to your adoring audience and a few of mine. I'm going to go make a living. <laughs> before you go, before you go, I must thank you so much on behalf of everybody for your time, for your preparation, the 90 minutes we had yesterday. You are a true expert and you're a true professional. And I think everybody can see that. That's absolutely uh, clear. And I know that uh, Jim works on the uh, PowerPoint for you, all for us. And we do thank you for that so much. And we look forward to seeing you, most of us in the UK, pretty shortly and I'm going to go to um, speak of you. Can everybody give Patricia a big wave and a big thank you for the uh, for, for her camera and for a screen capture. That's uh, absolutely uh, brilliant. So um, thank you so much. Off you go and earn some serious money now and um, uh, good luck and uh, I hope you'll come back and join us uh, when the lockdown's all over. And I'm now going to turn the recording.